There are more than 450,000 individuals in the United States who require renal replacement therapy or dialysis. These individuals continue to lead full and productive lives. I'm Dr. John Kevin Tucker, a kidney specialist at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Vice President for Education at Mass General Brigham, and this is Understanding Dialysis Options, Peritoneal Dialysis. When patients develop chronic kidney disease and the kidney function declines to a level such that the kidneys are no longer able to support life, that is when the patient will develop some of the signs and symptoms of kidney failure, many of which are nonspecific. They may include things like nausea, loss of appetite, fatigue, mental cloudiness, itching. There is no one sign or symptom that occurs in all patients, but it's a really a constellation of findings that suggests that the patient needs to begin dialysis because of these findings that are suggestive of kidney failure. Kidney transplantation is the most optimal form of renal replacement, but there aren't enough kidneys to go around. So most patients rely, at least in the short term, on one of the means of dialysis. There are two major forms of dialysis, hemodialysis, which involves the blood, and peritoneal dialysis, which does not involve blood. Most patients can do either hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. The outcomes are very similar. It's possible for patients to move from one modality of dialysis to another. The choice most often depends upon personal choice, lifestyle, life situation, change in employment, or change in school status that necessitates a change from one modality to another. Peritoneal dialysis is a form of therapy that is designed for the patient to do at home on his or her own schedule. In contrast to in-center hemodialysis, in which the patient must come into the clinic usually three times a week for the dialysis treatment. Most patients can do either one and is often driven by personal choice. The reason it's called peritoneal dialysis is that it uses the peritoneum, which is the lining around all of the organs in the abdomen as a filter. This lining is filled with capillaries or small blood vessels and the poisons that are normally filtered by the kidneys can be removed across that filter by placing a solution into the abdomen. When the patient drains that solution out, it contains the poisons that would normally have been filtered by the kidneys. There are two forms of peritoneal dialysis. There's continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis in which the patient does manual exchanges, but there's also continuous cycling peritoneal dialysis sometimes also referred to as automated peritoneal dialysis. In CAPD, the patient does over the course of a day, usually three or four what we call manual exchanges. And what that means is that manually, using his or her hands, hangs a bag of solution onto an IV pole and lets the solution flow into the catheter that goes into the abdomen. Once that solution has flown into the abdomen, the catheter is capped off and the patient may go about his or her activities of daily living. At the end of a four or five or sometimes six hour period, usually, then the patient will drain that fluid out. When that fluid is drained out, the patient will put new fresh solution into the abdomen. The whole process of, an, of a manual exchange from start to finish will take probably about an hour. That means gathering supplies, making sure that one has a sterile clean work area, doing the drain of the old solution and the installation of the fresh solution. For patients who prefer to have their day free, continuous cycling peritoneal dialysis is often the preferred option. That uses a small machine that sits on a bedside table and over the course of an eight or nine hour period, the machine will do several cycles or exchanges in much the same way that a manual exchange takes place. The fluid this time usually will drain by a long stretch of tubing into the patient's toilet. The setup will probably take the patient about half an hour, usually before bedtime, because that's when most patients use the cycler machine. The patient then will hook himself up to the machine and cycle overnight, typically for eight to nine hours. And then the disconnect process will take probably only about 15 minutes or so in the morning. Let's dispel some of the myths about peritoneal dialysis. The first one is that age is a contraindication to doing home peritoneal dialysis. Age is not a contraindication to doing home peritoneal dialysis. In fact, many of my older patients prefer to do home peritoneal dialysis. It's very difficult for my elderly patients to get out of their home 
to come into a clinic three times per week for instant or hemodialysis. So age itself is not a contraindication as long as the patient is able to be educated about how to do peritoneal dialysis and can perform the exchanges him or herself. The second myth is that education is required in order to be able to do home peritoneal dialysis. We've been able to train patients to do home peritoneal dialysis from many different educational levels and backgrounds. We've been able to train patients who had very low English literacy. We've been able to train patients who did not speak English at all. The home dialysis patient is supported by a whole team. That includes the kidney doctor, the dialysis nurse, a social worker, and a dietitian. The whole multidisciplinary team will support the patient in understanding all of the aspects of dialysis care. In order to perform peritoneal dialysis, the patient must have surgically implanted a catheter that goes into the abdomen. After the catheter has healed, the patient will begin training with a very experienced peritoneal dialysis nurse who's trained to educate patients how to do this form of therapy. The training process will generally take one to two weeks, depending upon how many sessions the patient can come into the clinic for in a given week. Once the patient has completed the training process, the dialysis clinic will order the patient's supplies, which are delivered to his or her home, and then the patient is sent home to do peritoneal dialysis. Before we discharge the patient from the clinic to do dialysis at home, a home visit is required by law. So the dialysis nurse will go out to the home to make sure that the home environment is safe for the patient to perform dialysis at home. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Dr. John Kevin Tucker, and we are Mass General Brigham.